Hi, Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft room. I appreciate you coming by to view my December project for my creative spirit. I left all the measurements here at the beginning of the tutorial so that you could just go back and stop the video and write down all of the measurements. That way we would save some time <laughs> And we would also get the precise measurements and you could see the measurements, write them down and then view the tutorial. The chipboard that I'm going to be using uh, is a nice weight and it is perfect. It, You know, this is like starting out to make an album. It really is. You think you're going, you know, your mind is thinking, oh, this is a wonderful six and a half by eight album and you're going to put it together. And what I did here, I didn't use the black tape. I don't know why uh, I didn't use the black tape. It's so much easier, but I did use it on the next box. I did two. And so I'm going to throw that second box in because they're so... Gift box, excuse me, or gift bag, however you want to say it. It was so easy once you applied Claire's black tape. And once again, thank you, Claire, for the wonderful supplies that you have given me to produce this design team project. I certainly appreciate it, and I'm going to show you everything uh, that I used that uh, I was gifted as a design team member. So thank you, Claire, and let's move along. Now, the funny thing is, I ended up having to get a ruler out because once you pass that crease that folds under in your Fiskars trimmer, it's crazy. I can't seem to count past the six inch, I think it is. Look at me here, and I'm thinking, come on, Carol, now you can count out six and a half, but that spot does something to my brain where I have to get my ruler out, make a tick mark, and then proceed to cut it out. And we're going to travel along this project. You're going to love it. I know you are. You can get, you can sit down in an evening and make two of these. Once you've made one, everything comes together, you know. And I was crafting with uh, my friend Gail when we were doing this. Hey, Gail. And this uh, project was inspired by Gail. And so I thank you for that. Once you have all your chipboard set aside, you're going to pick out the beautiful papers that you want to use on this. Remembering that it's easier to put your uh, non-collection papers on the inside of the box and then use your pretty papers for the outside and the handles. And obviously it will all come together underneath the gift box once we get it put together. And I know how excited you're going to be to move along and make these for gifts at uh, Christmas. So, And it will work out for any occasion to just pass along a gift if you have the few project products excuse me that's needed in this and most uh, is the rings that you're going to use and there's a certain style I'm going to leave a link to those rings you know the ones where you have to put your um, I'm just picking up the paper while I'm gabbing here where you have to put something uh, in the ring to hold it out and it's kind of like a spiral ring you don't want to use those those are too hard to get in the chipboard uh, you can do it but it's difficult if you have wrist issues the ones you want are the binder rings the one inch binder rings that just clip out on the bottom and then you put all of your you know you just slide it through the hole and then you can put some goodies dangles and things hanging off of it so it's the one inch uh, binder rings that you're looking for. And I just got mine at the stationery store, which made it wonderfully easy to have some in stock. And I went with this Christmas theme. Look at these gorgeous designs. I've slowed it down to regular speed right here, just so you could zoom in and look at the paper design in the Stamperia collection. It was very difficult to choose from one side, you know, to another because they have beautiful designs on each side. But the thing about this collection that I wasn't familiar with, 
there aren't two pages alike. You know, sometimes you get, most times you get like two of those uh, pages and then you'll turn the page and you'll get two of another design, but that's not the way it works. That rose floral goes with the teal and pink that I'm putting beside it. That's the way they designed this paper pack. And if you look at the, the um, scallop right there, in another piece of paper, it had that exact design on it. So I ended up fussy cutting that beautiful edge and we're going to use it for our gift bag. Now what I'm doing is I take my Fiskars trimmer, the smaller Fiskars trimmer, and this is the way I keep things so that they're even. I butt it up against the top of the trimmer and I took out a piece of one, I think it was one inch double-sided sequin tape and I'm going to apply it down the middle there so that you have the proper length you're going to need to put down your chipboard pieces just like you were assembling an album except for all of a sudden before you know it it turns into a gift bag <laughs> yeah you know you're just looking at it and there you have it what this isn't an album it's a gift bag and then you're going to take your bone folder and you're going to press down to get any air out from underneath your double-sided tape. That is very important that you do that step. I know it doesn't seem like it's much, but really it is. Because it'll make all the difference for this paper lasting longer, you know. So that is super important. Now, to get my pieces parts, you have 6.5 by Ada. Then you have your... Um, six and a half by eight, another one on the other side, and then you have the middle section, which is which is the spine, of course. You saw me struggling, right? <laughs> I was trying to think of, what is that, that, that strip that's in the middle? It's called the spine. Just like we have a spine going down the middle of our body, so does this gift bag has a spine. So now I'm gonna run it through my Xyron large, nine inch, I think it is, you want to make sure you go around the edges if you use your Xyron. This is just eliminating time by running your chipboard through there. I remove the double-sided tape on the center of my two pages, which are 12 by 12 pages, obviously, out of the album. And this is the back side of it. Yeah, I was going to use that metal frame, but it ended up being 7 inches. Uh, from top to bottom horizontally and so I couldn't so I put it aside but I thought whoa that would have looked nice to frame some of these images in the paper now you want to not be too quick when you're taking off your chipboard if you do use the Xyron and I do put uh, my liquid glue on this as well look at that I set it right down <laughs> Talk about leaving everything, all my mistakes in my tutorials, right? Yeah, I'm back! <laughs> yeah, this is the way I design. I'm thinking to myself, okay, what are you doing here? Okay, where do I want these images to be? Well, you don't have much choice now that I put the center uh, tape down. <laughs> yeah, I can't, well, I could have cut it and turned it, but no. I worked it out and it looks so pretty. Now, I need to make it even, so I took my ruler, placed it on the bottom, and then I butt up my, my spine piece here, the center piece, right across the ruler section there. That way I know that these pieces um, are going to be even. And then I just, you know, if you've done a few albums, you know it's around an eighth of an inch that you leave between, you know, so you can fold it back and forth like an album. Isn't this awesome? And just guess at it. It does. You don't need to measure that. Just have your ruler placed at the bottom so you do have it even. Okay. Now I'm going to remove some of the paper. I don't need this much paper. And if I have, <laughs> I just throw that thing right down. <laughs> this is my Fiskars. I think it's a fabric ruler, and I love it. Oh man, I'm starting to use some of my products. Um you know, that are in my sash, and this one is a lot of fun. If you keep, make sure that that metal part 
doesn't jump up onto your ruler. <laughs> how do I know that? Well, yeah, you'll see a lot of cut marks in my ruler. That's how I know that. And then you're going to remove it. And yeah, oh, how am I going to do this now? I'm saying to myself, I'm bragging how much I love it, but I do. You just have to make sure you press down enough, you know, enough force going down to cut your paper. And you know me, I don't want to get those scissors out because once those scissors get in my hand, I'm telling you, there's no turning back, as we all know. <laughs> so here I am. I have to cut the edges. I'm just going to miter the edges to make it easier. And I'm thinking to myself here, why does it look like so much paper's coming off? I don't get it. But this is what you do. And if I had to use the wonderful black tape of Claire's, I wouldn't have had to go through this process. But I wasn't thinking. And But wait till you see on the next gift bag. It is so beautiful. I use the black tape. And it really does help in the speed of making a gift box or bag. If I say box, please excuse me, I mean a gift bag. Uh, and you want to take your nail there and just, or your ruler or something sharp, your pokey tool, and press in the corners so they're not sticking out. It doesn't take much. Just press it in and it makes for a nice fine edge uh, when you're placing it down. I just used, you can use double-sided tape here, but I use liquid glue because the, this is going to be the inside. What you're looking at right now with your chipboard facing your eyeballs there, that's the inside when you lift it up of this gorgeous gift bag. And uh, once you make this one, once you start and you make this one, you are going to, it's a habit. It's habit for me. It's, it is such a delightful project. And I saw this first with my friend Gail, and I said, oh, that's beautiful. I have to make one. <laughs> yes. So we made this together for my design team project on FaceTime, and she helped me out. And it's always nice to have a friend on, you know, FaceTime to uh, chat with while you're creating. They just help you uh, with your... Uh, inspiration and uh, it helps time go by. If you're using glue and you're not using double sided tape, get right in those edges on the, you know, on the bottom of your chipboard, which would be the top of your paper, so that it'll dry nicely. And then after you do this process of putting it down, run your um, Teflon, whatever bone folder you're using, on the bottom, like push it up so that the paper really gets that glue actually on the bottom of the chipboard where you don't see it. And it'll dry and secure and then you're going to take the end and we are just going to work that paper so we can lift up our gift bag and start making, oh, do you see it? Oh, it's coming together. And doesn't it look like an album? And it's not. It's a glorious gift bag, and it adds to gift giving, whether it be for Christmas, birthday, like I said, or just saying, you know what, a friendship bag to just encourage one another. You know, we certainly do need encouragement at this time. So I just love sharing this with you. I hope that you will go over and check out Claire's blog, her channel, you know she makes beautiful projects as my head jumps in there. So sorry. And um, and you can get inspired and get these supplies over at the shop at Claire's store. And you can also get so many wonderful tutorials that you can uh, just craft along with Claire. It's wonderful. Uh, here I'm, I'm trying to decide whether I go with the soft pink. And I changed my mind, but I wanted to show you my thought process as I'm creating. I went to my stash and I found a gorgeous teal that absolutely ran together with the paper. And that's what you have to do. It's just I walk the paper over to where I keep my 8.5 by 11 inch papers. And I just walk it along to see what papers I think will match nicely. 
and if I have enough to cover the space that I'm trying to cover. Sometimes I grab one and I get overexcited. I put it down, I go to get another one, and there's only one. <laughs> Have you ever done that? It is so frustrating. It's just like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's where's the rest of these papers? And uh, yeah, probably in the store, Carol. They're not there. <laughs> you don't have them. So uh, you can see I did have two of this color, but it really, I don't know, it didn't do anything for me. So I took my uh, piece right here that I'm working with over to my papers, and I found, like I said, that teal. And I think this is the key. You want two pieces for either side, but you need to have the outside pieces kind of, you know, when you have the bag, you need two different colored outside pieces. You'll see what I mean. So I chose the pink for the edges of the gift bag, which are the outer sides, you know, that are going to fold in when you put your gift inside the bag. So, yeah, it's kind of difficult to explain, but you certainly will see it in a second. So I did use the pink when I measured that out, and I used the teal. So this is what's lovely about having, you know, cardstock at your fingertips. You can just pick out the colors you want that blend into the product line for me that Claire sent me was the beautiful Christmas Stamperia uh, papers. And you will agree with me. And you not only get the papers, I got an 8x8 collection pad. I didn't I didn't want to break into that because I have another project I'm going to use with the 8x8. But I just used a couple of sheets of the paper of the 12x12 to make this, which is fabulous. And if you see me over in the corner there, I'm talking to Gail. <laughs> uh, look at this, Gail. Isn't this gorgeous? This is what I was sent. It's absolutely beautiful. And these are going to be my feet for the bottom of the uh, gift bag. I want to raise it up. Now, there's another way of doing this, which I'll show you on the next gift bag, is using thumbtacks. But I wanted to lift it up with this because Claire had sent me these wonderful products that are over in her store. All right, so here we are. Go back to the two pieces we need for the outer edges. And you'll see where you're going to score. It's just three score marks and one here and one there. Do exactly what I'm doing using the measurements at the beginning. I tell you that it's for the outside of the box. You're going to take out the corners here, all the corners, boom, boom, boom. And then we're going to place it. Now, for the next bag that I did, I learned from this bag not to use hot glue. Use your liquid glue when you put this on. The hot glue really was not necessary. I was getting burnt and I was also, you know, it's hard to get the exact amount of glue down so you don't have that raised up look, that bubbled look. So if, if you're doing this, I'm going to just add that piece of inspiration. Use wet glue to put it down. Now, when you go and you're taking your bone folder and you're creasing down all of these edges you're going to turn the small side up you're going to fold it over just one of them and you'll know why you're doing this and then in the center fold it back and forth because this is what's going to bend when you have your gift box you want to just take your tape or your double-sided glue and press it in I just needed to get a little piece of that out. It just didn't fold properly. So take your bone folder and fold that over. That's going to be the top of your gift bag to be pretty. And the bottom is what's going to join the two sides together. And you'll see that right here. Now you will see how easy it would have been to use liquid glue. The hot glue didn't work for me. But it did. It looked pretty and I did, you know, it, it looked good. You wouldn't tell, oh, let's throw a wet baby wipe there. <laughs> I don't leave anything out. That's the way I craft. I learn from my mistakes, and sometimes mistakes are good because then when you do it again, you're not going to make the same mistake, right? So here I am, and liquid glue, you have movement. I'm jumping in all over, but that's what I do. I'm adding the glue. You have to be quick with hot glue. That's what I really didn't like about the hot glue, too. You know, once that thing dries, it's over. But if you use the wet glue, you have some movability there, and it works out better. 
on the next gift bag that I do, just like this, but only different colors. I used musical notes in the cream, and then I did the black and red stripes, and then the red with the calligraphy background. You're gonna love, love, love it. Each gift bag, you will design differently according to the paper that you use, right? And then you, your inspiration will soar. Since I was not well for the last few months, I found, I didn't even know whether I was going to, there, let me just show you there. See how nicely this will crease and fold in uh, when you're carrying it so that it looks like a gift bag. It's not stiff. It doesn't have, you know, two edges there that don't move. This folds in. There you go. Do it nice and easy, you know. Make it nice and easy. There, see, Gail, see? I'm just showing. Get her approval. Then I had to use a bit of wet glue because I didn't get all the way to the top because I burnt my thumb before this. <laughs> yeah. It's a wonder I don't sometimes come on and I've got band-aids on all my fingers. It's just, and I have the tools so I don't burn myself right in front of me, but I don't use them. I don't understand. So here I put some liquid glue down at the bottom. You can see me trying to work it. And the two bone folders that you can get at Claire's, so affordable, it's crazy. It's nice and long. It's the longest bone folder I have ever seen. And you can get down inside your gift box easy peasy and just, you know, press down and get all of those little corners. But you know what? This wasn't necessary. This is a learning process for me too as I, you know, talk 50 miles an hour. But because I haven't made this gift box. So I'm learning as you are learning now watching my tutorial. So, uh, because you're going to put that piece that we cut out for the bottom section of our, um, I say cardboard, but it's your uh, press board or your, you know, that cardboard. That's what I call it. But anyway, you're going to press that down. It's going to just fall down and cover all that that we're doing here. When I keep gluing everything down, you're not going to see any of that. And if I didn't use those wooden dowel uh, for the dowel uh, feet, I would have pressed thumbtacks down in like up through the bottom. And then when I hammered down the tack, like the point, I, I'm just cleaning up here because I got glue everywhere, including my fingers. But you would hammer down the top of your tack and you would have tacks on the bottom instead of feet. But I liked the idea of having those feet that Claire sent me, so that's what I used. And to get the pretty color to match, I gessoed over the, the wood, the wooden feet, waited till it dried, then I took my Copics and I airbrushed the color on. But you, if you don't have an airbrush, don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, oh my shattered nerves, you just take it and color it on. And here we go with the... Uh, 9-inch Xyron machine. We're going to run the papers over. You can see I didn't quite get that. I apologize if you hear the dog that is a neighbor's dog. And soon, you know, I have to wait because if he comes out of his doggy door, he doesn't like any movement going on and he starts barking. As you knew in a, a tutorial I did on my album, I didn't even know. I didn't even realize it. So I just waited time out till he went back in the house and now I'm back. So isn't this gorgeous? This is just such a gorgeous project. But you know what? I made a mistake here putting it in. I didn't push the paper down to the bottom. I measured so that I saw it even at the top, right? So that that little line, see how I did it? I raised it up. When you cut it out, make sure and all, I, I ripped it out. I had to start again. I just took my pointy tool and ripped that right out. You need to have it so it looks good at the bottom. You are not going to see it at the top because you have that paper that folds over the design, the pink paper that folds over. So just take your glue, take your page, your papa page, push it down all the way, check the sides so that they're even on each side, as even as you can get it. And you can see how pressing it, the corner, like the, the sides, they just fold in beautifully. And see how nice that is? And when you'll understand when I get going on this 
the paper edge that we cut out when you see the measurements at the beginning, that paper is going to fold over. So your main concern is to get that paper pushed down all the way to the bottom and then check the two sides so that they're reasonably even and then everything's easy peasy. Now you're going to cover this. I'm going to do it with the pink. I'm going to tape it down. You don't, cut, you don't have to fold it over. You're not going to see it. This is just add some liquid glue and then put the paper on. Or if you don't have that rolly Fiskars thingy, just cut it to the measurement at the beginning of, you know, the exact measurement of your chipboard. See, I said chipboard, I didn't say cardboard, it's your chipboard. And then easy peasy, get it back out. Don't skip up on top. I don't know why I'm afraid to put the pressure down because I generally have too much pressure. But uh, here I'm being super duper careful and there you have it. Look at that. All the mistakes that we made, or I made, <laughs> yeah, don't include me, Carol, I didn't make them. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> yeah, are covered up with this. How wonderful is this? Yeah, oh, I love that. I love it, Carol. Oh, yeah, that's just wonder. And liquid glue. Oh, yes, that little birdie flew down just to say he was encouraged and inspired by this project. And see what I mean? How you have that um, covers up all those little imperfections that we leave in the bottom. Then I took a paper towel in my long bone folder there, pressed it down, and we have the bottom completed. And isn't it delightful? Now, when it comes to the time to embellish, it's wonderful. Here's the... Okay. This is going to fold over your gift bag, but what I did on the second gift bag, I put, um, I went over one on my score tool to have, you know, I always like to have um, a gusset, that one sixteenth of an inch gusset. It's just one line over. Either way, it will fold nicely. Either way. But on the second one, I did put a gusset in the center of a sixteenth of an inch, which is one, one long, um, you know, the lines, just go over one of them, the indents on your scoreboard. So here, what I did, I did not have a gusset, but I took my bone folder and I pressed down on the top so it made it look like I did a gusset because the chipboard was thick enough to make that impression. It was beautiful. So here we go. If I can keep my crazy head out of this tutorial, will be wonderful. We're going to put double-sided tape. Uh, rip it off and cut it off and fold it over and the pink matches the side the two sides of your gift bag easy easy peasy and wait till we start embellishing you're gonna go crazy it's just so wonderful it, the products in this Stamperia collection are out of this world the chipboard pieces I love vintage I love the vintage friends skating on together with their long dresses and their old-fashioned skates and oh and I made a beautiful pond and yeah so much fun so here we go check your edges you may have to do a little bit of measuring yourself if you know sometimes that chipboard just isn't right on as you can see to, on one of these sides I'm pressing heavy onto the chipboard top to look like I did a gusset and see how you can see the thickness. There is a little thickness on there that is, uh, you know, wonderful. If you didn't put a gusset, you just, I'm opening a nice tea. <laughs> yeah, uh, since I got sick, I really haven't been drinking a lot of pop because that's really hard when you have bronchial pneumonia to have pop, you know. Uh, you really want to drink a lot of water, so that's what I tried to do. And... Um, so I appreciate your prayers during the last two months for me. I really did. So here we go. We have the pink that matches the sides, which match the bottom of the gift bag. I'm just showing Gail uh, the reason why I haven't used this forever. And it's wonderful because the, the score tool just fits in the bottom. And I forget that I have this. 
You know, I generally use the Martha Stewart small one or the uh, 12 inch long one, uh, but I really like this one. I like the way you can butt it up against the corners of this score tool and I like, excuse me, I like the, uh, that it's on a slant. It's on a, it comes down towards you, so that's awful nice. Now here we go with the measurements. These are our fantastic handles. You're going to score them twice. You can see you're going to make two score marks and put your double-sided tape or liquid glue, whatever you want to use. I chose the double-sided tape because the measurement was perfect size for this actual roll of sequin tape. And then what I didn't get straight, I just cut off with my scissors. And there you have it. So fold it over, and if you didn't get right up to the corner, add a little bit of wet glue like I just did. Isn't it wonderful? And then you're going to make a score mark on the top so pretty so pretty and look at the design on there i'm gonna to have to fold that over but that's okay because they match perfectly these little roses in that teal the the color of them are so vibrant and yet so soft it is you're just happy 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 while you're creating it you really are you love you'll love the process i i just encourage you to give these gift bags uh, a go and have fun while you're doing it. So we're going to score, we scored in on these. You can score a gusset if you like, but uh, I didn't on this one. Just make sure they're both the same because we measured them out there. You don't want to have one shorter than the other side. Take the side of your bone folder and just go across it so that you can work out some of the paper fiber soften them up so that it will bend nicely and then we're going to pick out all of the things now can you see with me those uh one inch that right there how they clip together they just snap boop together uh it, they're fabulous but those thin ones to the left there they're cr even at the upper right they go, like they're twisty, they go around and around. Then you have to put your pokey tool in there and push it out and try and get it out without pinching your fingers while you put it through the hole you made in the chipboard. Crazy. I did not like it. And I did not have enough to do uh, this, you know, use those clip-out uh, ones till the following day when I went down to my to Beatty's and got myself a box of the one inch binder rings that I use. So I, I put that round one that I don't like, you know, the, the round, round, round one. I put that inside the fold of the paper. So I didn't have to do anything with that. That was just securing the paper together so I could put my glorious, wonderful one inch snapped uh, book ring they call them. I'll leave a link. I'll leave a link. I got a box, uh, two boxes of 50. That's what I bought the following day, but I didn't have it. Boy, I was looking everywhere in my stash. I was taking them out of, of uh, album, you know, pre-albums that I had bought years ago, and they'd be one of those rings I love inside there, so I'd just get my little fingers. There's the difference. See that? What a difference it is, but it was nice. It was nice that I actually had enough to, to make this project for my design team project and not have to use those other rings for going through the holes that I had made. See, I had four of them. I was so excited. Yes, they're one inch binder rings. And they clip, it's just pink. And they're clipped together, they don't come apart. You are going to slide that. Wait till you see, oh, it's endless, my friends. It's so endless. All of the beautiful things you can get out of your stash and go absolutely crazy. Here I was looking, I wanted to put um, something on the sides, right? Something nice. So I got out my uh, brads. You know, I have about six of these glass things and I separated all my brass. You know, there's flower brads, there's silver and gold. You know, back in the day we went brad crazy. So um, here I'm measuring over. Okay. I want to make sure that the right side comes in the same amount of inches as the left side. I find that important. You, and you want to have it down 
at the right measurement, you know, with your ruler there, so it's not cattywampus, it's all over the place, and you won't be happy with that, because once you take that, uh, your uh, whole thing, your, to make the holes, your uh, We Are Memory Keepers, is it We Are Memory Keepers? I don't know, with our uh, hole puncher, that's it. And then if you have to redo it, it looks like a mess. But I have a remedy to it if you do. I'm going to show you what you can do if you got a cattywampus. I always show you how I fix up my mistakes. Okay? And uh, it's easy peasy. So here we go. Once you get all that measured and you know that those rings, the beautiful uh, binder rings that just clip beep, right in there, you are going to be excited to move forward and press that hole with your uh, tool. We are memory keepers tool hole puncher thingy. That's what we're going to use. There it is right there. Woohoo! It's just a small one, but you want to make sure you can see that little tick mark you made with your pencil. And you know, this drives me crazy. I don't know about you, but every time you make a hole, you got to dig the pieces parts out before you can punch another hole. They have to come up with a remedy for that. They really do because that holds me back. Then I forget what I was supposed to do. <laughs> By the time I clean it out and I start again, I'm there. What am I supposed to be doing here? Yeah. So here we are. I have another. Um, this is the hole protector thingy um, that you punch out. <laughs> you can tell my brain. I'm working so hard to get this voiceover edit done for you today because I do have three, four more videos to go up that I have completed and they have to be edited and voiced over so I can't remember nothing. My brain has gone soft on me here today. Uh, yeah, not like it does not any other day, <laughs> but the, the name of this thing will come to me and I, I'd appreciate you leave it in the comments. You want to go three high. That gives it some stability going around the holes and I used this on the inside of the, the gift box the gift bag, so to speak. I used it on the inside, so it covered the ring hole on the inside that matched the papers that's there. So it was kind of nice. It was like a pink and a blue, and it looked nice when you're looking into the gift box, right? The gift bag, it's a gift bag, that you see those, uh, the hole covers on there. That's a nice word for it. You put your glossy accents, leave it overnight, I just had a bag that I took something out of and I used that because if you put these on paper and then you try to get them off using glossy accents, yeah, you're going to be dealing with another problem. So if you put it onto the plastic, easy peasy, and you'll be able to see, you won't see the hole on the inside of the pink. So I went pink and teal. Went to my stash, got out some of my flat back poils. And it's not a true white, and it's not a true cream. It's right in between to cover the seam. Oh, yeah, look at that. I'm starting to rhyme. I'm starting to get super excited on getting this uh, voiceover finished for you and making it so that you are super excited to make one of these, and it uses up your stash. And go over to Claire's shop. I'm telling you, she has products. That black tape, it comes in um, like a cream color too. I, I'm i telling you, I'm, I'm going to make a, an order for the cream and for the black so I don't ever run out because that tape saves you time in having to cover your albums or cover this gift bag. Uh, just that's the most brilliant thing, Claire has that she invented. Yeah, thank you, Claire. What a time saver to, to use that, and I will show you on the next album. So here you go. I thought it'd be kind of nice to do the edges with hot glue, of course, and don't get out anything so that I can cover my fingers. Oh no, let or you know, I'll just burn them again, and I did. I did. It's like, uh, it's just something, I guess I feel it's a necessity to do. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so here we go, making it as even as I can. These are beautiful flat back pearls. I got at the dollar store when nothing's a dollar. Got rolls of them in all different sizes. I know I've shown this in all tutorials. 
and I'm going to put one on either side of the seam there and it'll still fold in enough to make it look like a beautiful gift bag and it is a beautiful I think you'll agree with me that this project is wonderful now when you're looking at it here see how you are uh, on the sides if you use the hot glue it kind of pushes the box out a bit from the the sides just a little bit if you had a used wet glue it would have secured it evenly on both sides when you attach it to the outside chipboard so um, you'll understand once you start doing your project and I really want to encourage you to go over and check out Claire's shop because it is her products and everything that she has and that she creates over there for you to purchase is is products that will speed up your work and bring your work to another level that's what I'm talking about it'll bring it to an uh, from her tabs to her tape to her paper line to her tutorials wonderful wonderful I love my creative spirit and all the hard work that Claire does to make our crafting so, I can't have to say it again, so wonderfully inspirational. So here are the tags that are inside your collection. I was just checking to see if they were stickies, but they're not. So I got out two, two of those girlfriends there skating with their beautiful 40s or 50s skirts they had on back in their brown skates. I just think it's so cute. Their little beanie hats and their hats with the brim on it. Oh, I love that era. So I, I did one to put on ice. The two girls there, the larger girls. And you can see they're one to at least two and a half inches, uh, cl maybe close to three inches high. They're a nice size. Then I did the girls. Now, I, I wanted to show you this these... Um, the ribbon here, the flowered ribbon. This is in cream. See? Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. He really does. He's feeling all, oh, get out of the way. She's coming over. Could be her hot glue gun. You never know. <laughs> yeah. I don't want my feathers all curled up. So I, I just wanted to show you the difference between a true cream and then that white cream that I with the flat back pearls. I didn't use it, but I wanted to show you. Then I had this roll of Cricut paper and it is um, it has it's like a sticky it has the uh, back you just peel off and it'll stick down wonderfully you really, you don't need to have it has the measuring squares on there too which is great you know, there's no waste here and uh, I this comes in rose gold silver true gold uh, and it has that design in it that beautiful um, crackled look and I thought, that looks just like ice to me without having to do anything. So I took an oval die and I cut the Cricut um, peel away paper, I'll call it. And um, look at that. I just set that oval down at the bottom. Instant ice. Yeah, that's not happening. See that? Yeah, with that Cricut paper, Cricut paper, you don't want to take it off again because you'll be taking the other paper off as you saw that. Took some hot glue of Kois. Get that out of the way, Carol. You're going to burn the side of your gift bag. Oh, I make myself nervous when I'm doing these tutorials. The voiceover when I see how close to mistakes I can get. So I thought, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh. Sometimes less is more. It is true. You don't have to have so much on here that it takes away from the beautiful gift box design. And I put that there. Oh, I, I had so much fun with this. I can't even tell you. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I think I told you a thousand times though, didn't I? So here we go. I am going to make a dangle for the sides and I was thinking of you Debbie when I made the dangles just so you know because you sent me a beautiful dangle for my glue on the side of my glue that beautiful gift you sent me so I thought of this and look at the colors 
pink and teal to match. I wanted to I wanted to just have this dangling. I was going to put it on all four rings, but I thought no. No, 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 no. That would just look like too much. So I made one and I remembered my sister Barb had given me these gorgeous um like crystal there um there oh what kind of crystal is it i can't never think of the name let's just say they're beautiful beautiful and it reminds me of ice you know dripping off your eaves trough this beautiful piece of ice that's what i thought of and then i'm going to put these dangles one on each side they almost look like earring dangles don't they so I had to remember, I had to take it apart actually because in between each pearl I wanted to put, um, see how my mind just goes, uh, I haven't done jewelry in a while, but you know the, 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 the separators that you put in between the main pearl and this just really did add to the gift box and my design team project for my creative spirit. And these are the things that not only you use, there they are. Thank you, Barb. These are the hanging crystals that she had given me for my crafting. And I thought on this side of the ring, I'm just doing a close up here. There's the feet. I did not show you the process, but really it was just the chipboard, the gesso, and coloring it with your Copics. And that was it. Now, I want to take that white ribbon off. These all came with white ribbon. And aren't they gorgeous hanging crystal um, ornaments, I, I guess you'd say. And I'm, I'm just, uh, I must be showing Gail right there. I'm showing somebody. Or I'm trying to reach my scissors. <laughs> oh, there it is. I was probably trying to find my tweezers. These are my reverse tweezers to hold, you know, um, actually to pull the ribbon away from the hole so there you have it and i'm going to put that back because i only need the one and it was in such a nice gift box too i think it was at the eiffel tower if i bring it back in i'm not sure oh it's london the london bridge and isn't that pretty and the gold it's so nicely gifted to me so thank you so much for that barb and now we're going to move forward to creating my dangle to for the side where the actual ice skaters are. And then you're going to have this hanging piece of ice, kind of, with the matching pearls. How pretty is that? And then you just have your, whatever you're using to put your pearls on. Um, oh, excuse me, you're going to, oh, oh, he doesn't care again. He'll walk across anything. Oh my, so I'm just trying to twist the wire, you know. These are actual, um, I think they're four inch wires that I have that hold the pearl at the bottom. It already has the round base. Then I'm going to make a circle, pinch it in to hold it, just so I have enough ring to apply it with another ring, you know, a nice... Um, you know, the rings that come in to separator rings, I think they call them. And I did it in silver. And then I added this clip that I had that open and closed. Uh, uh, what is it called? The jaw opener or something like that? I'm not sure. I haven't done jewelry for so long. I can't even remember the names of things. Isn't it terrible? But I attached it with that because it had a large, thick ring with the... Um, you know, you pinch it in and open the clasp, opens and closes. So I was able to put my creation onto that clasp. Uh, why did I say like a jaw clasp? Uh, I'm not sure. But I did a pretty, pretty satin ribbon right there. There's that crystal hanging um, piece that looks like glass. My two little pieces of... Uh, Danglies there with the pink and teal pearls and and then the, uh, the jaw pincher thing <laughs> everything's a thing to me I'm so sorry um, but I needed some more space so that it would hang down it wouldn't be tight to that to the uh, binder ring so that's why I put that there and you'll see it in the pictures 
I'll do one that has a close-up of it in the pictures for you. And I'm just so excited to be able to get this up on YouTube. I sure have missed everybody, and I can't wait to hear from everyone in the comments. Tell me what you think, and if you're going to do one of these uh, gift bags, just some matching tissue paper in there with your gift. There it is. I'm loving it. But I thought, you know what? I want to add to the cream some white. I wanted to bring the cream tone down and use some white. So I grabbed another thinner piece of satin um, ribbon and we're going to use that. We're only going to use two pieces. I cut them, you know, like on each side to a point. Then I'm going to put that point underneath the bowl with my pokey tool with some hot glue on it, just like that. Press it up in there and uh, it'll fall to the side and it'll take away the look of that's the cream just being so creamy, you know? <laughs> yeah, my creamy cream. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? And they look so happy being skating on their little crooked skating rink. And uh, the jaw clasp, you can see it right there. How you pinch it up, you pull it up, and then that opener opens. And you can get uh, off whatever you have on there. It's like a keychain thing. A keychain thingy. Yeah, let's go with the thingy thingy. I keep saying and driving you crazy. Oh, I well understand it. And you can see inside, when you look inside with the binder rings, you can see why I wanted to use those... Uh, whole protector uh, that that I pressed out, see I didn't say thingy, that I punched out and I'm going to match that. I didn't want to hide the skaters faces, you know, they they're, they look like such good close friends and the beautiful crinoline under their gorgeous skirts and the brown skates just took me back in time. I just loved it and you know what did that? The papers, that stamp period paper that Claire sent to me. I'll leave the links to her shop, to her blog, to her projects. I'm telling you, nothing but goodness there. So I finished that off and then I'm going to clean up my mess and zoom out and see what the next thing is. What am I trying to collect? There were so many goodies in there from my day of making jewelry and I still do. I like to have jewelry in my stash. My friend Debbie from Myrtle Beach, we got into the jewelry making kick and we were making jewels and ordering jewelry left and right. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple of videos, haul videos of uh, we would we would go online and order together and uh, so we had matching stuff to craft with and so thank you Deb. We sure did have fun didn't we? And now this is uh, when, at the beginning, remember this paper, this balance that was on the other side of the paper that I used for my gift bag? I fussy cut all around the bottom and now I'm just adding some antique brown distress ink in the little cubes there, just going around to vintage it out. And it just looked a little bit too clean for me because I'm such a vintage style person. You know, I like that, so I had to take all of this off. Yes, you can't do it with the rings attached. This will kind of give you a uh, little peek at how it really does look hanging off of these binder rings. So see how they just clip off? I'm trying not to wreck the bow in my hand, but they do, they have a nice tightness to them, but they do just snap off, and I was able to get them out of the holes without too much damage. I don't think I had any. Now I've got to cover the hole up. So what you want to do here is take a pencil on the inside and make, a, if you want, go through the hole in the back and make a little hole onto your paper. That way you'll be able to find when you go to get your um, hole puncher, you can um, know where to punch the hole out, right? I didn't do that, but... <laughs> Of course I didn't do it, but it, it was a good idea. I did do it on the second one, see? And then the third one will be, I want to make five of these for my uh, older grandchildren. So for their gift, you know, I'll put some yummy, smelly stuff in there. And for my 
daughter-in-laws and I think three of the adult granddaughters all make these bags. And I know they'll keep them, and, you know, it'll be a memento from their Nana. So there you have it. Now, doesn't that bring it to a vintage style look? Just be careful with those scissors. Yes. And um, doesn't it just bring it to another level because you have the same colors, you know, that um, because they're from the same collection, of course, that just bring it to, down into a different era. And I really do love that. And I think you're going to love the pictures when I show them. Just stop and bring them up. You can see for yourself how wonderful the collection is. You know, that's what makes this gift box is the beautiful papers. And I'm sure you have beautiful Christmas papers in your stash. And as you write down the instructions at the beginning of this tutorial, it will be so much easier for you to just uh, craft, you know, craft quickly and get it made, get everything cut out, and then have fun with your embellishments. So I am just placing that inside there. I can feel the hole in there. Believe it or not, I could kind of get a sense of where I had punched it. And I thought, ooh, I just, just close your eyes and go for it, Carol. <laughs> well, maybe not close your eyes. Just go for it. And I did. And it worked out perfectly. Look at that. You could not get a sweeter looking gift bag. You can't get that at a store. I'm sorry. You can't. It's just made with love. It's, it's, it's an outpouring of love going to someone you love. And that's what makes it so beautiful, you know? And it's coming from your stash. And you're just um, thinking of the person and what they would like. And then that makes you love what you do so much more. And here you have it. It's so funny. I crisscrossed this <laughs> when I was putting it in the first time. I did one on one side, one on the other. And then um, my friend said to me, uh, what are you doing? No, no, stop. <laughs> I'm going, what? You don't crisscross the handles. They have to be on the same side. I'm there. Oh, oh, I'm so thankful. That would have looked crazy. But anyway, yep. So there's my binder clips. I put them in the hole. And I added the round circles to the inside. You can see it there. See the teal little circles? There are three of them high with glossy accents on it to protect the paper ring or your paper binder clip going through. And uh, yeah, isn't it? Look at, oh, I tell you, I know I get so excited. I can't help it. It's just a nice project. And I, then I made matching cards to go inside. The, each one of the gift boxes, which I will show you. I, I use the same paper uh, to look at, I gotta stop because just look at those handles. Look at the paper. Oh, I'm telling you. Now, I brought it up another level. Inst no, I didn't do that. I didn't want to cover the right hand side roses going down that strip that actually belonged to that paper. So I, I I just said, no, that idea's got to go. Look at that. Isn't it so pretty? I just love it. But what I was thinking was on here, I'm going to put some roses. Oh, yes. Um, what, am, what am I? I don't know. What, oh, I had to add a little bit of glue. My white ribbon just had a little bit of fray that was sticking up. I wanted to get it uh, put down. So here I went to my stash and I found these uh see the buds the rose buds in white and I will encourage you if you are new to paper crafting and you want to buy flowers instead of matching the colors to whatever design or whatever project you have I decided real early I'm going to buy everything in white because then I can spray it with my Copic gun I can paint it the color that matches my project instead of trying to get a perfect match ordering something that isn't from the same line that I'm using, right? So that's what I decided to do. If I couldn't get white, I'd do cream. Now, I made a little twist with the wire of three baby buds. And in the center, I put my Copic color that matched the pink. 
But then I thought, that pink, I don't want it to really pop off the side like that, that you see that and it takes away from the paper. So I took my Zero Copic marker and I just toned it down. I just pushed it back into the paper and then I had just a hint of that pretty color. And I'm there, you can see the Zero marker. I'm just pushing that bright color into the marker and make sure that you clean it off on a paper towel before you put the lid on your Copic marker. And uh, then the, each package had a little white bow in it. So I just took uh, enough packages <laughs> and slid out the little white bow. And I put three baby bud roses and a little white bow at the top part of the binder ring. It took away from seeing that metal and it added the prettiness of the pattern in the beautiful Christmas collection. And there you have it. I did all four corners the same way. I did three rosebuds, twisted the wire, and then I hid the bottom of the cutoff wire with these pretty little white bows. I did it to each side of the handle. Look at that pattern in the handle, and they aren't the same. Oh, I went over it again with the Zero uh, Copic to push it back in. And then, you know, instead of wiping off the pink off my Zero marker, I added it to the rose next door, and just to get a little touch of that pink in there. Just a second, I'm going to slow this down. There, my friends, I slowed it down so you could see how beautiful this um, gift bag is. Doesn't take you a lot of time. You get to go check out your stash, go over and see Claire's shop. You will be amazed by the products that she has. And the black and the light beige tape will save you so much time in creating something like this and for your albums. Check it out. Claire is a wonderful creator. She will inspire you, and she has all of the projects that you can purchase to follow along, and um, you're no stranger, I'm sure, to my creative spirit, so um, I'll leave it at that, and I am so thrilled to be designing. I'm so proud to design for Claire at My Creative Spirit. Here, I'm just showing the flowers again. I thought I'd grow one again on the side. <laughs> there you have that dangle, the skaters. They're sitting up on those beautiful wooden feet and that I just put the gesso and then Copic colored them. You can paint them, whatever you want to do to match. But they're sitting up higher. I really like that. And now I die cut. Oh, now I die cut these. this die that I had of a pair of skates. I did one in silver, the die cut, and one in white. That way I could cut the bottom of the feet the blades off on the white so that the silver showed through and you had a silver blade. So I glued them together and they have a beautiful, they lace up, the lace comes up and ties in a bow and doesn't that look gorgeous. It just, you know, you just have to cut the top of your laces off the silver paper and uh, seat your white skates on the top and cut off the blade of the white paper so that the silver shows through. And you have yourself a lovely image of some up-to-date skates. And it shows you the difference between back in the day and today. I think it's wonderful. I put it on the picture side of the Christmas here, the Merry Christmas. I'm just trying to situate, I do it on the lower level of the right hand side of this image. So you'll see that in just a second. And I loved spending today with you my friends. I was so happy to get this edit done and so pleased and blessed to share it with you as a design team member at My Creative Spirit. Thank you Claire for the privilege of designing. Thank you for your wonderful gifts that you sent to me to design with and this Stamperia Christmas collection is stunning. I can't wait to show you more 
projects as we get closer and closer to Christmas so that I can use it in little projects, um, you know, so I can quickly use it up. And there you have it, the close-up. I did not put anything underneath the skates. I wanted them to stand off of the chipboard like that. And look at the paper line. Oh, and look at the vintage look of that, the chipboard feet on the bottom. There's nothing that anybody couldn't create uh, with this. Whether you're a beginner or you're a well-seasoned crafter, you will enjoy the process of making these gift bags for your friends and for your family. And thank you for spending this time with me, this hour and so many minutes. I sure appreciate it because time is valuable. I realize that. I missed everybody and I this dangly oh I know my little birdie. Yeah, get in here, little bird. Oh yeah. Oh, she's coming. He never knows what I'm gonna have in my hand. So there you have it. Thank you very much for um, sharing this time with me and viewing it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think about this gift bag if you uh, are going to make one. And uh, please subscribe to my channel and press the like. It does help me if you did like it. And I will see you. That's it, my friends. I'm going to see you on the next project shortly. Bye now and do take care. <music>